Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam ala nabiyyana Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam amma ba'da habita fillah A question was asked, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh I'm kind of confused and would appreciate if you could clarify something for me I'm trying to follow Salafi Minhaj but I'm seeing so many disputes The new one is Sheikh Muhammad bin Hadi and the ones he calls Sa'afaka I know this is a kind of a waste of time to speak about this but how can I know who to take from and who not to take from? How can you tell me who truly follows the Salafi Minhaj and who doesn't? If I was a follow S pubs, then I wouldn't think they are upon misguidance because I'm ignorant myself. My new plan was just to learn Arabic and restrict myself to listening to the tapes of the older scholars and learning like this because I don't know who is real and who is fake. How can one who is ignorant and beginning in his seeking of knowledge know exactly who is right to take from? Forgive me for this long question. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Make all of our affairs easy and good and forgive us of our many sins. Bless us with a class with a bat. Ala sunnah to Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. First and foremost, as you mention yourself and answer the question really yourself, is not to waste your time and to seek knowledge. And we said this countless times. I, in fact, I made a whole playlist and just, just for information. It's there. It's called what it means to be Salafi or something similar to this. And I think there's about at least a hundred videos in there about these topics. So first and foremost, do not waste your time. Secondly, this is not from the Salafi Minhaj to involve yourself in the fitna and the affairs of the scholars. Thirdly, it's not from the Salafi Minhaj that you have to take, you're forced to take a position. That you should be with Muhammad bin Hadi, or you should be against those who, uh, Sheikh Rabi's position, or you should take Sheikh Rabi's position, or you have to blind follow this one or that one. No, that's not from the Minhaj of Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah. And this goes back to the statement of our Sheikh Sheikh Imam Muqbil bin Hadi al wadi who was a, one of the major scholars in this time, who died. And he said, and this is, tells you, uh, it gives us insight about the Salafi Minhaj. And this really, we could write a book about your question. So I'm going to do the best I can just to be, just to give you some general advice. And the general advice comes down to, uh, uh, you know, put your head down, stay away from fitna. But for those who want to continue in listening, let me give you a little bit more detail what I'm talking about. Imam Muqbil, Rahmatul Wasiyah, he said, Da'wah to Ahlul Sunnah, Da'wah to Nila Kitabila, Min Kitabila, Ila Kitabila, Women Sunnati, Rasulillahi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Ila Sunnati, Rasulillahi Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alaihi Wasallam. He said that the Da'wah to Ahlul Sunnah, so that means that's what we're concerned with. You're not concerned with being a part of a group, be, you know, S Pubs, Medina.com, whatever, this one, that one, no. You're concerned about the Da'wah to Ahlul Sunnah because we are saying, our claim is that Da'wah to Ahlul Sunnah, this is Islam. That Salafi Minhaj, this is Islam. That we're going back to the Book of Allah and the Sunnah, the Message of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, according to the method of the Salaf. That's it. So we, it's not that you have to take a position, you're forced to take a position of Shaykh Rabi. Shaykh Rabi is an alam. Yukhti wa yusib, he makes mistakes and he's correct. In, uh, 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 Shaykh Muhammad bin Hadi, he's a Shaykh. Yusib wa yukhti. But that shouldn't... It, it's not a black and white picture where you have to take one position or another that you even have to involve yourself in that fitna. Nor do you need to discredit the other party. Even if you see that one party, you may have a view based on an ilm, we hope, that one party is mistaken. That doesn't negate their salafi. All of a sudden, they're mistaken in this. Halas, we throw away all the work he's done for years of an alim or a sheikh or what have you. That's, that, that minhaj is very dangerous and this is not what the major scholars at this time Wala Qadim were upon. So we got to say that first and foremost. Going back to the statement of Imam Muqbil, he said, The Dawah of Ahl Sunnah, which is the Dawah we're concerned with, is the Dawah from the Book of Allah to the Book of Allah. So that means we're using the Dalil from the Book of Allah to call you back to the Book of Allah. And from the Sunnah of the Message of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alaihi Wasallam, to the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alaihi Wasallam It's not about Imam Muqbil wasn't about calling to himself He wasn't about calling to Damaj He wasn't a call He was about calling to the Book of Allah and Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam And I never saw anyone in my life like that man That was one of the individuals in my life who impacted me uh, immensely Just from seeing him Just from meeting him Just from seeing what I saw in his face And what I saw in his deeds and actions And when you listen to what he was saying and we digest that. With that being the case, 
Don't waste your time. Let's go back to the nasus. Let's go back to what the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. First, we have to understand something as we're teaching on our other uh, durus about uh, in, in Bulugh Amram, Bab uh, Kitab Jama, the comp comprehensive chapter, uh, comprehensive book, Bab Zuhd wa Wara, the, the chapter of Zuhd, asceticism, and Wara, uh, meaning piety. And Zuhd, as Imam bin Baz says, and let's, let's go to this real quick, and I'm going to do the best I can to be short, which I, I have a problem with running my mouth, forgive me. A Zuhd, a habit of a Zuhd is what's meant by Zuhd here. It means those things, you know, asceticism Islamically is not the extremism of the Sufis that you have to wear a dirty thobe and you, 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 you leave marriage and you leave. Uh, 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 cohabiting with the the opposite sex in marriage, and you no, that's not what zuhud is. And that you have to have dirty hair and and, and, and you worship uh, idols, or you 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 think that you balaga yaqeen, you reach a level of yaqeen and certainty, you no longer pray. No, that's not that's not uh, zuhud. Zuhud is not to allow the dunya to come into your heart and consume your heart to where you begin to worship it and where it distracts you from ibadah. To Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and ta'atillah. And wara is leaving off, and this is just very simple, short, to be short. Wara is is basically it is a strong relationship with taqwa. Because it's a type of piety in which you are leaving off the mutashabiha. Or leaving off those things which are ambiguous or those things which you don't know about. So from wara it would be to leave these issues. And if you find youth that are busying you and forcing you, you better take this position of Muhammad bin Hadi on the Sa'afiqah. You better take this position of Shaykh Rabi for the mistake of Muhammad bin Hadi for declaring about these ulama that they're Musa'afiqah Musa or whatever. From Wara is to leave that. And who cares what the youth say? And I'm going to tell you the evidence from the book of Allah, uh, from the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, especially. Listen to some of these ahadith because this is going to give us the best answer. Is going to the nasus. First and foremost, the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, said in the hadith of Nu'man ibn Bashir, radiyallahu anhu, saying, Nu'man pointed with his two fingers to his ears, and he says, "Inna al-halal bain wa inna al-haram bain wa bainuhum al-mumur al-mustabihah la yalamuna kathir min al-nas." He said that the, the the halal is clear, the haram is clear. And between them are, uh, uh, are uh, doubtful issues, and many of the people don't know. And Ben Othimim mentions about this, that many people do know as well. So that means there are many people who don't know, and there are many people who, don't, who do know. And the people who do know are Ahl al-Ilm, al as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in Surah Ali Imran. And with that being the case, Ahab Tifillah, I stay away from the doubtful issues. The halal is clear, the haram is clear. Dawah to Ahl Sunnah is clear. Stay in the Dawah to Ahl Sunnah. Adhere to the Book of Allah and the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and those things which are in accordance with that. And atlub al-ilm. So between them are, 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 are doubtful adders matters which many of the people do not know. Thus he who guards against doubtful matters keeps his religion and his honor safe. So if you stay from involving yourself in controversy or in doubtful issues, okay, this is more about the doubtful issues that things we don't know whether it's halal or it's haram, but there's also a relationship here and the reason I'm emphasizing and what I'm making a stilal of is the wara, is the importance of not involving yourself in doubtful things or things you don't know whether it's halal or haram or leaving off mubahat, mubah, mubahat things that are maybe permissible but leaving it off from taqwa, from, from, from not in order to, as the Prophet ﷺ said in this hadith, he said against, uh, against doubtful matters, keeps his religion and his, his honor safe in order to safeguard your religion and your honor. Because if you speak and you get involved in these affairs, you can taint your religion, be declared a mubtadia, or fall into innovation, or take a wrong mokif, or what have you, not based on knowledge, based on taqlid and blind following, or... And along with that, you can destroy your honor. So avoid that fitna. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wa alaihi wasallam also said, and for the sake of being more precise, 
the Prophet ﷺ mentioned in a very important hadith, which we, we just finished uh, going through this group of hadith of the Messenger of Allah, alayhi salatu wasalam, he said, salawatu rabbi wasalamuhu alayhi, that min husnu, min husni islam al mari, mari, tarku malayani. That from the excellent religion of a servant is leaving off that which uh, uh, that doesn't concern him. Leave those things which don't concern you. You answer that in the question. Leave those things that don't concern you. And what we learn from this hadith is that there are, th depending on a person's practice and their indulgence in fitna and their level of iman, this is reflected in their level of Islam and their level of iman. That there are those who have husnat Islam, meaning they, they're perfecting Tawheed. They are not engaged in fitna and distractions and things which will not benefit them and sinful practices. And then there are those who are less than that, who have defects in their iman, who are involved in things which uh, don't concern them and cause them fitna and confusion and trials. We also learn from this hadith that the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is that it encourages us to avoid and leave off those things which do not concern us. And a part of that is not speaking about affairs that we have no knowledge about and those things la yanfa'uk, that don't benefit you. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said in another hadith, Man kana yu'minu billahi wal yawm al-akhir fal yuqul khayru li yasmut. Whoever believes in Allah in the last day, then say something good or, or be silent. So just be quiet. And that's going to be in accordance with the sunnah of the method of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. That's going to be in accordance with the method of the Salaf because they even wrote books about a summit. You know, of just being silent. Be quiet. Stay away from the fitna. Avoid the fitna. Avoid always having it. That's why when people come up with a qaida, a new principle, where they say you can't, uh, saying that you you must take a position, you must, uh, uh, and that's battle to to say you can't force me. They're the ones with no hujjah. They're the ones with no hujjah, with no proof in these matters. Another benefit of this hadith is it shows us that the Muslim should concern his or herself and ask about those things which will benefit them. And this is affirmed from another hadith of the Messenger of Allah, alayhi salatu wasalam, who said, Ahras ala ma yanfa'uk, wasta'an billah. Strive, be vigilant with those things which benefit you, and put your reliance and trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's Tawheed. That's Tawheed al ibadah Because you are putting your trust, putting your affairs, seeking reliance and assistance with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and you're busying yourself as the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam commanded you to do because you're from Ahli Iman, Ahra Salamayan Fak. Busy yourself with that which benefits you. Those are three ahadiths which show us avoid these things. They have no benefit. They don't bring you any closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you find that a fitna, and trust me, this is only one from the many that will come. We've seen how many before. But look at now, people are some of the people, some of the parties are just eating each other. But it won't affect Salafiyah. There will be more Salafis that are coming, that are waking up and saying, hey, we don't want a part of garbage. We want a part of Kitabillah. We want people who are calling us to the Book of Allah and the Son of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam who have given us that glass of clear water so we can choose and drink from it and partake from it and purify ourselves and bring us closer to Allah and meet Allah with pure hearts. Allah wa hiya qalb. In if he jizzed mudqat and he the salah had jizzed a kullu. We the fasid of fasid the jizzed a kullu. Allah wa hiya qalb. Verily, in the heart is a morsel of flesh, or in the body is a morsel of flesh. If it is healthy, the whole body is healthy. If it is sick, the whole body is sick. Verily, it's the heart. So, again, a whole book can be written, and we could go through tons of nasus that will affirm for us. But khalasatakul, the thing that I want to say here, 
is as you said, your plan is to learn Arabic and restrict yourself uh, to listening to older scholars. Now, I don't know if you don't, yes, if you have the Arabic language and you can listen to those great Imams like Imam bin Baz, Imam uh, Al Albani, Imam Muqbil, Imam uh, bin Uthaymeen, who offers a sea of knowledge, then do so. And you'll see that during their time, the way they held things down, a lot of this fitna couldn't have really, and that's from the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, a lot of the fitna happened after they died. And because those imams held it down, those imams were respected. They were respected by Ahl Sunnah and even Ahl Bid'ah, uh, mostly. And the, type, the, the level of knowledge that they have, and you can see that from their books and their lessons, and you can see how they dealt with Ahl Bid'ah, and you see the wisdom and the knowledge and that they were they knew that there would be people who would claim Salafiyah who are walaysa bi Salafiyin. That there would be people who claim Salafiyah and only stem from them fitna and controversy. Going back to the Qaeda in fiqh that the reality of something is in its substance not in its name and Imam al-Albani if I failed to mention which was a definite slip on my part because that Imam of Ahl Sunnah in this time you know that was only an absence of my, my, my thought process but that Imam no doubt you can benefit from his lessons and how he dealt with a lot of these affairs because a lot of these things are recurring but for the new youth they just find confusion and they find that they're forced to take a position in a camp so again keep seeking knowledge strive to benefit from the major scholars and those major scholars that are living now and even scholars scholars who don't busy you with with, with fitna those things which are going to benefit you if you die today is it going to be, are you going to be asked about your position with the Sa'afaka or who the Sa'afaka are, or what a Sa'af, what, what it is? Are you going to be asked about that? No. Involve yourself with that. That's what the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said. So continue to seek knowledge. Avoid the controversy and fitna. And as far as real and fake, those are terms I wouldn't use. Because we're not saying that our ulama that may fall into a mistake or may even fall into busying people with some of these issues, we don't say that they're fake. And I'll give you a real life position. Just recently, Muhammad, Sheikh Mohammed bin Hadi was here. I don't agree with the Sheikh on many issues, many issues of his tabdir. And I think some, you know, and we won't talk about that, but I don't agree. I don't blind follow neither, bi'idhnillah ta'ala. With that, I went to go see the Sheikh. He makes tibdi of many mashaykh that I love. And I benefit. And I don't agree. And I don't agree with his evidence. And I looked at the evidence of both parties. But I still, in my heart, I still want to benefit. He came here to Demam, so I went. I, I only had time to break away for one day. I went two, two days. One to his lesson and to Sheikh Muhammad Ramzan Al-Hajri. And it was very beneficial. That one hour with Sheikh Muhammad bin Hadi and that one hour with Sheikh Muhammad Ramzan. So don't make things black and white where this one is fake and this one is not fake. No. It doesn't mean they're not Salafi or this one because he has this position and this one has this position. No. But rather, again, go back to those things which are going to benefit you. And that's the best that I can offer at this time when we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Anything I said that was correct was from Allah Azza wa Anything I said that was incorrect was from myself and the shaitan.